In this tutorial screencast, we'll talk about the nucleophilic acyl substitution of an oxidation state 3 functional group. And that is the addition of a nucleophile to a carbonyl followed by elimination of a leaving group. So let's look at uh, a carbonyl that is contained within an oxidation state 3 functional group. So we'll draw our carbonyl. We have a sigma bond and a pi bond to oxygen. And I'm going to draw some dimensionality to the carbonyl. We have two lone pairs. So we're at oxidation state 3 here. So I'm going to draw that as X. And then just some R group. So these are oxidation state 3. Particularly let's consider if, if X were chlorine, so that would be an acid chloride or some alcohol derivative that would be an ester or our last good leaving group would be some other acetate derivative and that would be an acid anhydride. So these are the three oxidation state, three functional groups that all contain good leaving groups and we'll discuss that a little bit later in this screencast. So what is the mechanism of nucleophilic acyl substitution? So if we have a nucleophile that has a lone pair that can be neutral or it can have a negative charge, remember that in the curved arrow formalism, the lone pair drives the arrow, so we're attacking the carbon of the carbonyl. Now the leaving group at this point uh, does not just leave. The first bond that breaks is actually the pi bond of the carbonyl. So we proceed through an intermediate that rehybridizes that carbon. So we're starting off at sp2 and we're going to an sp3 hybridized carbon. So the negative charge is now going to be located on the carbonyl oxygen. So we conserve that charge. Here is our X group which we said could be chlorine an alcohol or some acetate. We have our R group and then we have our nucleophile which just added. So now the carbon is sp3 hybridized. So as such this is called a tetrahedral intermediate So notice the bond angle about the carbon has changed from 120 to now 109.5. So we have a good leaving group in terms of X. So the first step was the addition. The next part of this mechanism is the elimination. So the lone pair on oxygen is driving the arrow to reform the pi bond. This leaving group is then leaving with the electron pair that's in that sigma bond. So the, the central carbon is now being rehybridized back to sp2. So let's just highlight in red here what has happened we've done a substitution of X for the nucleophile and the addition has the, the mechanism has occurred first through addition and then second through elimination so remember that elimination is formation of a pi bond So again, we returned to sp2 hybridized. So let's take a look at the leaving group ability of X. So 
So what makes something a good leaving group? So we're going to consider ultimately the pKa of the conjugate acid of that leaving group. So let me put a seal. So that's, that's going to be our oxidation state three functional group. So let's consider acid chlorides. We're going to consider anhydrides. So there's the general form of an anhydride. If R and R prime are the same, it's symmetric. If they are different, it's, it's dissymmetric anhydride. If X is an alcohol, then we have an ester. And then if X is an amine, we have an amide. So I've drawn the primary amide here, and we've said that acid, carboxylic acids themselves um, do not participate in nucleophilic acyl substitution. They have to be transformed into one of these other groups. So what is the overall uh, trend in terms of the rate? Acid chlorides react faster than anhydrides, which react faster than esters which react much, much faster than amides. So why is that? Let's take a look at the leaving group. So we'll call this LG leaving group. The leaving group is Cl minus. Put our lone pairs in. The leaving group for an anhydride is this carboxylate. The leaving group for the ester is an alcohol. We get our charge here. And the leaving group for an amide will be some ammonia derivative. So now let's consider the conjugate acids of those leaving groups. So the leaving group, that can be considered a base. What is the conjugate acid? So what we're doing is we're protonating. So there's the acid of that HCl. We have now some carboxylic acid derivative. We have an alcohol. And we have ammonia or some derivative thereof. So now that we've identified the conjugate acid, the way we determine that trend is actually through looking at the pKa values. So the pKa of HCl minus 7 of our carboxylic acid derivatives are typically around 5. Our alcohol is 16 and our amine is 38. So the pKa actually gives us a, a quantifiable number to show us why that an acid chloride reacts greater than an anhydride. So HCl is a very strong acid, so its conjugate base chloride is very stable, so that is a good leaving group. Any carboxylic acid has a pKa of 5, its conjugate base is a carboxylate derivative, that's stable through resonance. And you can see as this number is increasing in terms of pKa, so as the number increases, that's a weaker acid, so it's a, a weaker leaving group. So the trend is typically you're going to transform your carboxylic acid into either an acid chloride or an anhydride, and then do your nucleophilic acyl substitution with some other nucleophile. So in summary, this has been a discussion of the mechanism for nucleophilic acyl substitution, proceeding through ad addition of the nucleophile, followed by elimination to give you overall substitution.